Okay, you've probably got tired of me showing this VFX again and again in my channel. You're like, we get it, it's two noise textures panning on a disc mesh, show us something new. But actually, this is a square plane mesh, not a disc. You might be wondering how the textures became circular then. It's by the power of polar coordinates. In today's video, I'll explain what polar coordinates are and how they can be used in materials to create VFX. So, before talking about polar coordinates, let's talk about the normal coordinates we're familiar with, Cartesian coordinates. So a location x, y in Cartesian coordinates means we find x on the x-axis and y on the y-axis, and the intersection is the location x, y. Now in polar coordinates, however, the components have different meanings. The x now represents the radius and y is the degree. So to differentiate from Cartesian coordinates, we often use r and theta to represent a polar coordinate. The theta determines the direction and r determines how far we go in this direction. For example, to find where two pi over three is, we rotate counterclockwise pi over three, and then move in this direction for a length of two. And that is the location that this polar coordinates represents. To find the location that a polar coordinate represents in Cartesian space, we can use the transform x equals r times cosine theta, y equals r sine theta to find the location. Now that's probably a lot of math, so here's a more visual example to help you understand this. So this graph is from a website called Math Insight, and I'll link it down in the description. Here is a mapping of polar coordinates on the left side, and it maps its location onto a Cartesian plane. So as I move this point around, you can see how the mapping works. When I move this on the r-axis, is actually changing the radius on the Cartesian plane. Now here's another example that's closer to what we want to achieve. So the left side is on the r and theta plane, which is a regular rectangle. But actually, if we view it as a polar coordinates, when we transform it back to the Cartesian plane, it became a disk, which is what we want for our textures, right? So you can imagine the left side is using the original UV coordinates, and the right side is what will happen to the texture after we do the transformation. So when I slide it on the R axis, you can see it's increasing the radius of the disk area on the right side. The same for the theta, it's increasing the degrees of this disk. Now, back to VFX. We already showed how a rectangle area can be transformed into a disk by using polar coordinates. So to get this radial spiral look on a texture, with a regular plane, we'll need to use polar coordinates. But remember, we're manipulating UV here, which means we'll need to do the inverse operation in order to get the results after we use it to sample the texture. For example, you remember when we want to scale up the texture to be twice as large, we actually divided the UV by half, right? So the same logic, if this transform will give us the disk area, we'll need to do the inverse transform on the UV. Now let's take a look at the material. Basically, we're just following those two transformations of the R and theta. The top row here is to create the R by multiplying the float two together. So it's basically multiplying the components to itself. And then we break out the components and then add them back together and then take its square root. Now for the theta component, we also break out the two components and then do a octangent calculation. So then we append them together and now this part is already the transformed coordinates that we want. And the divide here is to stretch the original texture on the y direction by two pi. So that will give us a full range of a circle and the 3.142 here is just a approximation of the value pi. Now the subtract part here is just to move the transformed texture to the middle because before the origin is at the top left corner and then by subtracting 0.5 we'll move it to the center. 
And this part is just to add some adjustments to the texture like tiling or offset or you can change this to a panner and now controlling the speed. Last part here is we need to change the texture samples MIP value mode to derivative and then we take the original texture coordinate and take the DDX node and DDY node and plug it in. The reason for this is beyond the scope of this video but it's just if you don't do it you might see an ugly seam on your polar coordinate texture and this setup just fix it. So that's the basics of how to use polar coordinates in Unreal Engine. I know this may be a bit more math heavy if you want to understand all those transformations but that's kind of the fun of VFX creating beautiful art using literally math. If you understand some basic vector math, trigonometry, and basic calculus, those knowledge can all go a long way in your journey as a VFX artist. I'm thinking about introducing some of these useful math concepts for VFX artists. Let me know in the comments if that's something you guys would be interested in. And if you want to know more about this VFX and how to set up the material, please check out this video that I made a while ago. And as always, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.